Hello, welcome to episode 26 of the Tiny Disc Podcast, a show about games and life. I'm Robert Scarpinito, and I'm joined here by the marvelous Jack Cepeda. I've got two things to say to everybody. Bong bong. It's pretty hot. And the extraordinary Colin Sparling. Oh my God. You guys remember the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? That was a great <laughs> yes. movie. Yes, that's random, but yes. Yeah, Sean Connery. No, he said extraordinary. That's yeah, what I no, thought it's, of. It's pretty Has great. Sean Connery in it. But how are you doing, everybody? I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. <laughs> the movie was just called The League, I think. No, no, The I League of the Extraordinary full. Gentlemen. Yeah, it's the full name. Mm, yeah. Okay, I might be thinking of the TV show. Totally yeah, different. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> the TV show is about a bunch of guys who play fantasy football. <laughs> it's With the Sean same Connery. Con- same concept, though, right? <laughs> so, who did you pick for your quarterback? <laughs> That's a fucking bad shot. I know. That's the point. It's supposed to be bad. <laughs> Holy because shit. I know it's bad. All right. Where the hell were we going to go? <laughs> I don't know. You, it was, I, yeah, you, had, you had a question. You had a question for the table. Uh, I had a question I was going to pose to the table. Yes. And so I've been dealing with this. It's now late November and we're approaching, fast approaching the Christmas holidays, the Kwanzaas, the Hanukkahs. What, the all Quanic, those, what have the you. Quanicas, the Quanicas, the yeah. Quanicasonicas. Yes, and the Krampuses. And my, so I'm dealing with this problem. And the problem is I don't want to cook. Oh, I thought, I was like, Jack, just just apply some cream and your problem will go. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't want to cook. A, that's a different holiday, dude. That's not Chris, spreading Christmas cheer, okay? <laughs> spreading, I mean, spreading something. something. Jinx. Oh, Got him. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, we're on fire, guys. So, seriously, though, when are we ever serious on the show? But what? What was that? What I, I, the problem I have is that I'm looking for a place that will be open on Christmas Eve and or Christmas Day as well, because I don't want to cook. Like a restaurant? Yeah, a restaurant. Have you tried and so my, Apple, and so my, Applebee's? Hell no. <laughs> not going to no damn Applebee's. Applebee's? <laughs> This just in, Snapple has bought out the chain known as Applebee's, and it will now be called Snapplebee's. Oh, snap. Uh, that doesn't sound true anyways. So, I've, no. so my question to the table is, have you ever gone to a restaurant on a major holiday, like a Thanksgiving or Christmas, and at, what are your thoughts on it? Like, do you think it's, like, unfair for people to have to work those days? You know, they don't get to see their family those days. Do you think it's a benefit to anyone like what what are your just general thoughts have you ever done it what are, what are um, your thoughts so okay so i actually have done this um like you've worked on christmas day or something no 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 i i have went out to eat with my family instead of cooking on a major mm-hmm. holiday yeah so mm-hmm. i went for thanksgiving me and my family went to the steve dakota grill which is like a steakhouse um and we all got like uh burgers and like steak and it was like one of the best one of the best steaks that ever had in my entire Mm. life still to this day um and i don't i mean i don't really see a huge problem with it and and the thing is like the whole argument about making people work the thing is that at a lot of major establishments depending depending on how well you're staffed you can actually like as long as you do it ahead of time you can opt out of working a major holiday you're usually people that work the holidays volunteer like the way they do it at my work um like we have like a sign up sheet and like you have to like pick any two holidays. They have like Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, like New Year's Eve, New Year's Day and Thanksgiving. You have to play like at least opt for two of them. Doesn't guarantee you're going to work those days. That's a but, Dave and Buster's. Right. Which is okay. which is like a corporate like chain or whatever. I know but, they're open on Christmas Day. Yeah, they we are for Shit. six hours. It's it's like really short. <laughs> what? So it's Weird. like even if you do work, it's like not even a big deal. Um so I mean that. So what? Guess yeah. That's what I'm trying to say is like if if they're working there, they're probably they mo- more than likely opted to work that day because due to their own personal plans or whatever. Right, and yeah, that's what I wanted to say is that not necessarily everyone's got the warm fuzzies for like oh I can't wait to spend the day with my family or whatever you know because like everyone's kind of got a different situation. Not everyone may like their family or something like that. You know what I mean or. Because it, it's it's kind of like this myth or this tradition, right? Like, spend the holidays with your family and friends. Hold them tight. Go sit on a campfire. Or sit on a fireplace. Just, just for the record. Sit like, on I a like fireplace? My, we, like, we like our family, but it's just like we, you know, we're not at that stage yet where we can, like, make trips cross country. Like, 
yet. You know, hopefully next year we hope to, but just this year and last year we couldn't. Right. Now Jack's but, over there like bah humbug, like but, fuck all you. But I mean, <laughs> the the waiter or waitress is going to be working at Applebee's on December twenty fifth, serving your orders, Jack. He or she may not really care to go home for their families, be, not because okay. they can't, but just because you know, meh. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. So they're like, whatever. Working Christmas Day is just like working any other day for me. Um, but what's interesting, actually, is that Christmas back in Korea is like kind of different. It's not it's not really traditionally like, you know, family and friends hug them, hold them tight. It's Do you guys follow the uh, Japanese cult uh, tradition of going to KFC on Christmas? No, but that is a pretty great, pretty great tradition. Like, is how, that a okay. real thing? Colonel Please Sanders, an actual is, real thing. He's basically Santa. Colonel Sanders no is Santa. No fucking way. So yeah, good. they got their wires crossed. They think Colonel Sanders is Santa Claus, and you're supposed to go to KFC on Christmas. Well, he, oh my he God, is, dude. He is Santa. See, I I love this the slight like differentiations in understanding Western culture in Japan because it's yeah. like it's like oh that's so cute like <laughs> you know and, what I mean like they, they just they just warm my heart they're just so innocent. There's a real weird thing going on as well where like Western culture will always get like kanji or Japanese characters like tattooed on them or on their clothes or on their oh yeah on their hats yeah. or whatever and then like people that can actually read that be like. Why does it say fist on your <laughs> back? Yeah, why does it say yeah, why does it say wa- why did you yeah. get the word water tattooed yeah. on your arm? It like, doesn't make any sense. And then right? you see like the, yeah. the memes where it's like if I if I got like an English or word in English tattooed like they do in Japanese, it just says food on their arm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd yeah. be so weird. But it's the same thing. So so if you go over to Japan or uh, other Asian countries, you'll often see times English words, just random words spelled out. Uh, nonsensically like Absolutely. all over the place it works both ways and 100%. it's really fucking humorous yeah god i dude i'm dying to go to japan at some point i just i just love everything about the idea of japan like it's yeah. so great yeah i mean my favorite no, i agree like my favorite thing honestly is that colonel sanders is santa claus because to me that <laughs> implies like who else could give you that graciously good crispy <laughs> wonderful eleven herbs and spices than santa claus himself <laughs> please, and I, please, for the love of God, tell me that's their marketing campaign I, over there. I, I don't think like, it is, but it's still pretty good. Old Saint Sanders. Yeah. Oh, speaking of restaurants, I did like speaking of buyouts because I mentioned it like a second ago about Snapple buying Applebee's. That was a joke, but for real though, what happened for real? I don't know if you guys heard about this, but Arby's, Arby's bought out Buffalo Wild Wings. Yes. Whoa. Yeah. That's a thing. So and I, need I don't know how Arby's to feel about life. it. Does that mean I don't, I don't, does that mean Buffalo Wild Wings now has the meats as well? <laughs> I, they, I don't know. Be like Buffalo Wild Wings. We have the meat. We, it roll off the we the same way. also have the meats. Yeah, yeah. we, we also have, have the, the meat. The meat is here as well. <laughs> no, so according to the press release, uh, they're gonna like run still like independently of Arby's. It wasn't like. They just said Arby's, I think, for headline purposes because it was actually the the conglomerate that owns like Arby's and some other stuff. I forget. It's what it's Wendy's core, isn't it? Is it Disney? I don't. It's Wendy's. I don't know. Is it's, it? Yeah, it's on their ticker. It's a W E N. It's Wendy's. Oh, maybe I don't know, but I don't know. So it was just it was. It's still a crazy idea, but apparently this is going to run independent. Hopefully that means the prices go down because B Dubs has gotten expensive. It's not as cheap as you would think it would be for a place that serves food literally on like paper you know trays yeah seriously. no definitely not like it's like oh hey we sell bar food but it's not fucking cheap <laughs> yeah and they don't make that fucking dressing there either that blue cheese like all their ranch it comes out of a fucking tube you know that's like frozen and thawed out and then they squirt it out on your plate and bleh, five bucks and they tell you it's homemade it's fre- fresh from the farm <sighs> beat up i'm not gonna hate on beat ups i'm glad they exist I, but they, yeah their prices should come down yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're just starting to give you less wings for more, and it's just, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. So, back to the Christmas talk. So, <laughs> yes, oh, yeah, you Christmas. guys are four, you guys are four places being open on Christmas. No yeah, I don't, I don't mind it. And it was okay. also, like, one of my favorite, that was, like, one of my favorite memories, too, because we, <laughs> in tow, when we went out to that restaurant on Thanksgiving Day, in tow, we brought my great-grandmother, and she was 85 years old at the time yeah Whoa. and without knowing it she ordered like the biggest burger on the fucking menu <laughs> <laughs> she's an 85 year old woman she can oh, barely wow. like fucking put food in her mouth let a alone. salad yeah yeah like wow. like and so she gets this burger and on the me- on the menu it's called the double fist in burger <laughs> Who let her order that? You guys are not paying attention to her. <laughs> she wasn't fucking senile, bro. Like great she gets this burger, burger dude and I will, I'll just, have I will the never forget. I will burger, never son. 
forget her eyes when she saw the fucking burger <laughs> hit the table, dude. Wow. She had the most fucking wide-eyed expression. She's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, no, for oh me, it's, it's not that... Like I'm not against places being open on Christmas or like whatever holidays. I I take more offense at the idea of like if someone does really want to celebrate Christmas, but the corporation's like, no, you as an employee must work this day. You know, like mm-hmm. as long as the yeah. employee gives like heads up, like, hey, can I have the 25th off or the 24th off because I'm <laughs> going <stop>. home. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> it's definitely happened to me where I've been forced to work holidays that I didn't want to work because they wouldn't give you really a choice. Right. Uh, they would like some years where I worked in the food service industry. They would they, sometimes they would be like how you said, Colin, where they're like, pick two out of the three big holidays and you have to work two of them, etc. Yeah. Right. Or or one year they were just like, hey, what day is it? Is it a fucking Tuesday? Well, you're scheduled Tuesday, so too fucking bad. Yikes. You know, and that's where it's got real shitty. And See, like, I definitely I, um, don't want to be there, and I hated it. But I did make okay money, but mm. still, like, what amount is worth it? Right. That's true. I I mean I. Uh, I mean, I don't want to try and like make a blanket statement or anything because there's sure. certainly like a shit ton of places where you, you you have to be forced to work like a major holiday like Christmas. Like my mom, it was a gamble every year at her old yeah. job whether or not she would have to work Christmas, and more likely wow. than not, she would have to. Granted, wow. granted, she if we were short on money, we, yeah. she actually opted to work Christmas because she would get holiday pay. Damn, dude, and she would that's... get double pay, so she was making like sixty, seventy an hour. Whoa. That's a great mom, but that's a sad story though too. Yeah, it sucked, dude. So we what would have to do? Uh, I mean, I, I guess it's not as young kids. It wasn't that bad because we'd have my mom would be like, okay, so we need to have cr- our our Christmas like a day or two early. Mm-hmm. So we'd like, get to open presents there or you whatever. Go. But there you go. Yeah, yeah my but it still it still sucks though because it's like we go to my, you know yeah. we do the whole rigmarole where we go to my grandma's and have Christmas dinner and stuff, and she wasn't there. It sucked. Aww. Yeah, I was gonna say my birthday falls five days before Christmas, so. Uh, send it your gifts in to P.O. Box. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Choose something off of our Amazon wish list. But I oftentimes would get like, oh, this is for both. This is for both. You're good. You're good. Like, Thanks. That's fun. Appreciate it. I don't Appreciate know. It. Like Back home for me, like I've got pretty fond memories of just like going to shopping districts on Christmas Day. Like it's packed as all hell. I don't think I've ever shown you guys no. pictures of like there's a shopping district called Myeongdong back home, which is a big like a lot of fashion stuff there, a lot of makeup, a lot of clothing but also a lot of good restaurants. So it was just like hella packed. It was like a mosh pit everywhere you wanted to go. Uh, I'll show you guys the pictures later. I might post it on Twitter yeah, for the viewers. Yeah, it's really cool. And, you know, just seeing that on Christmas Day, you know, to, so for me, like Christmas has always been more about like just going out with friends rather than like spending at home with the fam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So have you been... I can't remember what you said, Robert. You have been to a restaurant or not? Yeah, I've been out on Christmas Day all the time. Yeah. Like not not as much here in America, uh, but back in Korea, yeah. Okay, but also like, yeah, I don't. Christmas is celebrated differently there. Yeah. So I the reason I brought this up is because I've been dealing with this the last couple of days, where I had to like str- uh, struggle and scramble to get reservations because everywhere is getting booked up like crazy in Austin for all the people that don't want to cook just like me. So I did end up getting a pretty solid steakhouse on Christmas Eve. And then we have a nice, like kind of Frenchy style pinky up in the air, doily style brunch the next morning. I don't know if we're going to want to do that brunch. Like, you know, at noon the next day, if we're going to do the steakhouse, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't even know if I'll be hungry until the next night. So, but right. they're there. They're there in our back pockets. We want to use them. We'll, we'll see. I'll you guys, guys exchanging posted. gifts though. That's the important part, man. <laughs> we're doing well. We're moving. Right. We're moving like early part of next year. So that's going to cost like literally thousands of dollars to move. So we're going to like have a muted gift giving. You know, we're going to do a couple things here, but we're not going to go crazy. Anything extravagant. There aren't going to be any OLED TVs getting open in my house on Christmas morning. (laughs) I couldn't afford afford this present. So I bought you this box for Christmas. I bought you a hug. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, yeah, you'll get one tomorrow, too, if you're good. But, uh, you know, uh, so we're going to keep we're going to we're going to just treat ourselves to some good food, some good times, watch some movies, uh, you know, some Yule time, Yule, Yule logs, Yule, Yule time logs? tidings, Yule, Yule, time. Yule time. Is that what they call it these days? Yep. Yes. We're going to we're going to get some Yule time, <laughs> some sweet Yule time. <laughs> Whoa. Well, I can't wait in four weeks to hear about your reservation at that fancy fresh restaurant, fresh French restaurant. Called fresh restaurant, fresh French restaurant. <laughs> French I believe that. French <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's Subway, bro. Yeah, I can't uh, wait to hear your dining times at Applebee's. That'll be great to hear. Um, so not going Applebee's. <laughs> 
We've got a pretty packed show for you today, folks. So let's start it off by going in to talk about some video games. So I wanted to kick things off here. Uh, I've been wanting to catch up on this year's releases. And I decided, hey, there's that one game that Guerrilla Games dropped like four days before the Switch came out. So like, rip. Um, called Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes. 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 I I, it. My PTSD is kicking in and I'm remembering all the games that came out around that point and how much of a scramble it was Man, <laughs> to it was try crazy. and play them all before, yeah. before the Switch came out. Like at that point, there was what? Neo was like mid-February, right? And I feel yeah. like there was something else early like February. Ne- Neo for Honor, Ghost Recon around that time. Oh, yeah. yeah all that yeah. stuff yeah. came out, dude. And then at the Persona end. Persona came out. That was April. Around that time. Um, right, but shortly Horizon, after. Horizon. Right. And, Ze- and then Zelda comes out and like consumes the my sl- life. The Switch. Yeah, not just Zelda, yeah. but the fucking Switch came out. Oh, yeah. So. With my Switch. Yeah. So, man, that was just like a really hectic time. Right? So, for me, Horizon Zero Dawn fell through the cracks. And before, I was kind of like... Hey, you win some, you lose some. But then I just I kept hearing more and more like, hey, this game is really good. You should go back and play this game. This is one of the best open world games ever. You should go play this game. You win some, you lose some, hey, eh, Luigi? <laughs> hey, Luigi. <laughs> so uh, I decided, hey, you know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll buy this video game. It was only 20 bucks on the PSN store over like nice. the Black Friday uh, sale or whatever. Totally and, worth it. Yeah, and I was debating, like, I know this game's good. Should I just bite the bullet on the Frozen Wilds too? I decided I can wait. I'll wait and see how much I enjoy uh, the base game. It's really good. I really enjoy the base game. <laughs> it's so good, it's, guys. It's really good. It's, it's so, it, it comes off to a strong start, too, I think. Absolutely. And I think that absolutely. I think the music as well is a little underrated, but gameplay is solid. I mean, go ahead. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, please. What I've always heard was that it was it's just like a pretty general, like typical open world game, but everything is polished to a T. Like everything is so good. And I kind of agree with that sentiment. Like nothing so far has been surprising in terms of game mechanics. You know, it's like you run over here, you set a waypoint over there, you talk to this guy, he gives you a mission in this area, and you go do that, you kill a bunch of things and you get the thing to give it back to him and you complete the quest and you get gold. And you know, it's all pretty basic. Like nothing will surprise you if you play Grand Theft Auto, if you played The Witcher, it's normal. But there, it just feels like they cut out a lot of the fat and cut out a lot of the bullshit. Like, the only complaint I have is that healing is a little bit annoying in the game. That's kind of it. You know, like, you have to pick those healing plants to, like, regain your healing bar so you can heal your health. Uh-huh. That's, like, the mm-hmm. only thing I can complain about. Everything else has just been, like, this is really cool. I didn't think I'd like a game where the only thing you really get is a bow and arrow and a bunch of other cool, like, weirdly prehistoric, steampunky, cyberpunky weapons. Yeah, but, the enemy design too is yes. is varied, and they all act differently. And I don't know, man. It's it's like it's almost the whole package. Yeah, for me, like I think the reason I like this game so much is one thousand percent the design of the world, just how everything is designed. How like there are ruins of cities where like you recognize like, hey, that looks like a modern skyscraper, but like hundreds of years later. And then just seeing these these robot dinosaur, robot tiger monsters just roaming the land, just like, it's their natural habitat and you're encroaching on it. You know, that whole thing. It just, it feels so cool. It feels like a world that I've never been to. And I don't think any games ever really ventured into. You know, yeah. it just felt so fresh and so real. It was kind of like back in the 90s when it was like, hey, here's this video game where you can play as a ninja. And it's like, oh, that's really cool. And now, you know, that's gotten <laughs> stale. So you have this. It's like, hey, you can play as a kind of a Stone Age warrior princess, but it's set like years after the modern day, after some kind of apocalypse. And there are dinosaurs made of metal and stuff, and you can fight yeah. them. Yeah, you play as Brennan Fraser, aka George of the Jungle. <laughs> yes, you have red dreadlocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, uh, it's dude. What a freaking original concept for a game. Absolutely, that's what that's what blew me away initially about the game in general, and eventually led to a purchase. Was just like I was just blown away by the concept of the game. We're like, hey, we're gonna take you know, it's like actually post apocalypse, but we're gonna put cavemen, put them against robot dinosaurs, essentially or robot animals. Yeah, and. Yeah. My my, that game is gorgeous. I spent way too much time in the photo mode. Yo, I'll way admit, too much time. That game makes me want to buy a PS4 Pro. 
And oh be- yes, it's, and dude. before I was so it, like, why the fuck would I get a PS4? I have a PS4. I don't really give a shit. Mm-hmm. But that game is like, I want to see what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's dude. the problem I'm having now because I don't have a 4K TV. I don't have any way of watching 4K yet. But I and I haven't completed that game. But I'm like, well, why would I play it? Until I get 4K, right? Like, why don't I just wait and have that be like the set piece? So that's like what's like keeping me right from from picking it back up. But to kind of go off what you were talking about, I mean, what an original, fresh breath of air that game is coming, especially from Guerrilla Games. Yeah. I mean, when they came out with at uh, four years ago in 2013, when they came out with uh, Shadow with Shadowfall, right, the latest Killzone game, it was like totally stale. It just missed the mark. It's like, man, Killzone is is done for right i mean that's for that's a series stemming all the way back from ps2 like Killzone, like hasn't done anything interesting in a very very long time so i'm so glad they finally got off of that and got out of fps's for that matter because it just wasn't really hitting i think the way that they maybe had hoped it would yeah um because i was gonna but say with this, with this new property i just can't wait to see where it goes and you know it's gonna be you know there's gonna be a sequel to this yeah absolutely because i remember too when i was thinking about like well okay i'm weighing my purchases what am i going to buy in like this february march time i already know i've set aside like 360 dollars for the switch and zelda like what else am i going to do here and when i looked at horizon zero dawn i was like well the marketing looks cool and i remember seeing it at e3 and i was like oh that's like really dope you get to climb that giant brontosaurus metal thing um but then i saw oh it's by gorilla games like they haven't made a good (laughs) kill zone game in ever like yeah. no kill zone game has been good in my opinion. I played one all the way through in the PS3. I don't remember the name of it because I was like, "This is Garp. This so is Kill Killzone Two was okay. I don't think it's a bad game. Killzone Three was a very interesting experience for me only because if you remember, that's when the move kind of came out, and they had put that's up right. a whole mode for Killzone Three where you can play with the move controllers when they're like clicked into that. this plastic gun configuration right and i played the whole game like that with the plastic gun and it was bad <laughs> yeah i believe it was it. bad <laughs> it was not good shooting was good anytime you had to just like sit there settle up and shoot that was good but well, anytime yeah. you had to move which is a lot in that game <laughs> that's all you do is move and shoot right and anytime you had to move it just felt really really bad because you had to have your hand on the gun and your left hand's up front and your, the thumb of your left hand is what controlled your movement as Oof. you're trying to aim and shit so it just wasn't a great feel yeah, and I played mm-hmm. the whole game beginning to end like that because I'm like, "Fuck you, Sony! I'm gonna have this experience that you've <laughs> carefully crafted for me. I want to see what you think is so good about this shit." And it it wasn't good. Obviously, no other games really felt that. SoCom tried but failed. Yeah, and it's it's crazy to think that Guerrilla Games went from that to the fluid motions that are in in Horizon Zero Dawn. Like every animation yeah. of Aloy specifically looks so funky fresh. It looks so good looks so cool like when when you jump off something and then just like slide into a piece of cover and then like let off an arrow after going into slow-mo bullet time it's always looks so good yeah Yeah. everything is so it is very fluid in that game and that's what's so nice like there's minimal amounts of like clipping or stuff like noteworthy things that would obviously tell you it's a video game and it's almost to the point especially in like the facial animations there's almost it almost hits the uncanny valley Kind of, yeah. You know what I mean? It's almost kind of weird with how, like, the facial the facial animations are. Uh, and they, they kind of get samey after a while, but... I seem to remember there was an issue when that game launched with, like, the the mouth syncing with the audio or desyncing or something like that. And they actually did, did have to go and release a patch to fix it because it was, like, just totally breaking immersion. Wow. Yeah, I, don't know. I like, do remember that. Looking at that game and then seeing that uh, Mass Effect Andromeda came out like what two weeks later, three weeks later, uh, like it really <laughs> drives home that like <laughs> wow, Mass Effect Andromeda doesn't Dude, their faces uh, don't look good. You're invoking the hitters this week, man. You're talking about Applebee's, Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> they're basically the same thing. Yeah, Ribbits. later on I'll bring up Hitler. Don't worry. Oh, <laughs> ouch. Uh, yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn's fucking great. Do not miss that this year. It's pretty pretty cool so cool so oh, yeah, man. yeah should i been... wait should i wait no, for a ps4 just play pro? it looks so good now i'm uh, playing it on a normal ps4 dude, playing it on ps4 pro on, on a 4K, 4k tv so great oh, I'm not gonna lie i don't know i mean for me like there's so much to already like about the game aside from the graphics like the story has me invested the environments and the world design are phenomenal and original and fresh and then uh ashley birch's performance is aloy Stellar. That's the girl who plays Chloe in Life is Strange, if you don't she remember. She is good. Oh, I oh, didn't yeah. realize that. Wow. Yeah, that's Chloe. And there are moments in the game where she's like, like Aloy's being real saucy and sassy, and I'm like, 
Is that Chloe? Is, it, is, is that Chloe? Is that Chloe in there? That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty is, good. Is, how far are you? Because I understand this is about a 30 hour game, right? Um, I've put maybe like 15 or so hours in there. I just got to like what I think is the biggest city in the map. And the map is huge. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I was I, surprised. I, I will agree with you, though. I think the game looks great already. You know, I should probably just buy the bullet and just play it. I think so. Uh, the big takeaway from this game, though, and especially how just the way all the releases have gone this year. And I hate the fact that I need to say this, but Horizon Zero Dawn just feels like a full blown release. You're not getting like told that you should buy in game currency. You're not told that you need to purchase any sort of DLC other than the expansion pack. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, we hadn't really had something like that since The Witcher 3. No, if you really think about it. No, that's not true. <laughs> Persona I mean, 5. Not even well, Mass Effect Andromeda has DLC. Not that I'm saying you should it, play that, but... Yeah, but I that's because the game I, sucks. <laughs> I, mean like, I mean like in an open world game like this. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I thought there were a lot wild. of... I thought there were a lot of things you could buy and a lot of things you could spend money on in this game. I thought, I mean, I'm not a foregone expert on this, but I, I don't think, I think I, it's you, only frozen wilds. I pre-ordered yeah. the, uh, well, I pre-ordered the deluxe digital edition. And so I got like different outfits and different weapons and shit. I don't know. In the beginning. So hmm. I can tell you, I haven't, I haven't looked at the game. microtransactions if there are any, just cause I was like, I don't need them. Like this game's already giving me everything I need. I don't feel like yeah. I need a legendary orc and a loot crate so I can shoot my bow and arrow better. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, even, okay. So even if I am wrong, like it is like true that this game, it feels really fresh compared to something like Assassin's Creed Origins. Yeah, I agree Or with that. like, well, you know. Well, it's hard to say. None of us have really played enough of Origins, I think, to say so. Well, I know it does have like in-game currency that you can purchase. And yeah. Like, and it, they do I, put it in your face. And Shadow of Mordor too. that was that. All, so, I mean, it's, all Colin's like, trying to say is that this is a complete game. Yeah, I think right. what you're trying to say. I mean, so I'm yeah. just saying it's nice. I'm just saying I haven't yeah. heard people complain about the Origins microtransactions. I, I hear it's just like it's just there. Well, right, but you don't really have to worry about them at all. You can just worry about immersing yourself in the world. Yeah, just the, even the if you don't need them for a game, just the fact that they're there to buy kind of puts a whole like damper on the whole experience for me, anyways. Yeah. Right, exactly. It, it's always like you know, it, it would just be better if they weren't there at all. It just feel like they're more confident in their game. Whereas they're like, hey, but if you want, you can spend these, you know, these credits over here <laughs> to and get two eagles now instead of one to look through. Yeah, you can yeah. toke up oh. on these microtransactions. The first hit's always free. Double we're gonna eagle. take the we're gonna take the drone from Ghost Recon Wildlands and put it in Assassin's Creed and make it an eagle instead <laughs> now of a it's drone. An eagle. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty edgy, guys. But yeah, that that I think sums it up for me. Horizon Zero Dawn, go get it. It's great, great redhead in the game, great character, great world, great everything. So some good. might say the best PlayStation Four game of the year. Uh, not for me, but sure. Some might say. Oh. Persona Five is the best PS3 game of the year, 2017. <laughs> What? <laughs> what? I mean, what? Yeah. PS3? Yeah, it came out on yeah, PS3. It was on PS3. In you Japan. Buy it. In Japan, right? No, 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 no. You, there's an American version. You can yeah, buy it on Amazon too. as we yeah. speak. As a matter of fact, you can, uh, because they cracked the PS3 years ago, you can actually emulate that on PC that's, that's and play right. Persona 5 on PC. That's right. Yep. That might <laughs> be the closest that thing me. we get. From a demons for a Demon Souls remaster, which we direly need. Rip. Um so over the weekend, Colin, you told us about a game called the Long Dark, and I don't know much about this game at all, so so help me which, out here. all you need to know is it's long and it's dark. Okay, that's it. We Got can just it. move on. That, that's Did all it. We <laughs> done. So you're talking no, about Silent Hill. Yeah, exactly. No, so like the Long Dark is a game that I'd always been curious about ever since it was in like uh, early access because I mean on, on the on the forefront it's just basic like a survival game, right? The survival of the survival genre that's become so popular, especially on Steam in the past couple of years. Um, but the Long Dark, I don't know, always seemed particularly appealing to me because it was just like there was no gimmick to it. It was just you were going to put you in some remote island off the coast of Canada and it's really cold and Arctic type climate there and you just survive. That's it. You got to worry about the cold. You got to worry about huh. your sleep and you got to work about eating and drinking. So this is the direct sequel to the end of Metal Gear Solid. Possibly, possibly. Awesome. Okay, so he's with yes. the slight dogs. <laughs> yeah, that, okay. that could be right. You play the snake the entire time. <laughs> awesome. And I would, I could, I could hold that theory if there they hadn't actually put a real story mode in uh, into the long dark. 
<clears throat> what, so, what are the graphics like? Are they like real simplified polygons or are they real Yeah, complex? so they're like, uh, so it uses Unity Engine and it has like an art style that's kind of like three 3D models with watercolors over them, like right. kind of like painted over. Um, and it, it it's, it's especially uh, evident in the story mode because they actually have full blown cutscenes. Um, okay. with animations and things like that. And it, it, it just, it makes the colors really pop and the art style really pop because you don't really, I don't think you really, uh, gain the extent of I, the, uh, the art style until you actually play the story mode, because otherwise you just kind of like, oh, they're going for a more, uh, simplistic art style, like in general, it doesn't mm-hmm. really come off as like more cell shaded like it does in the, uh, story. <clears throat> okay. But anyway, so when I jumped into the game, I didn't want to do the story mode uh, that I, uh, as soon as I jumped in, I wanted to just check out the survival mode and see how the game plays. So I just jumped right in, played survival mode. I set it to like the normal mode, which is like, you know, the wildlife is semi aggressive and weather conditions are blah, blah, like and I put I picked like the beginner area, nothing too crazy. And. So I start off and I'm like, you know, do my thing. Like I raided a couple of trailers that I found and like I was getting really cold. And next thing you know, like the wind's blowing and it actually takes like wind chill into effect and like air temperature. And you got to make sure you're wearing enough clothes. And if, you know, you don't get out of the wind in time, you can actually get hypothermia and Whoa. die. Yeah. Hmm. Like right then um, and there. Or is there like you have hypothermia, you can try and recover. You have hypothermia and then you're like your health is slowly depleting. Damn. Yes. Um, so it's yeah, pretty hardcore. Yeah, it's it's pretty in depth, and like you constantly have to make decisions on what like every decision you make in that game counts. So like, oh hey, I'm gonna go in this trailer that I found, and I'm gonna sleep. Well, sleeping actually, you have a calorie count, and sleeping burns calories. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, <laughs> this is ca- on- calorie counting the game. Yeah, so like uh, oh. one hour of sleep equals like 75 calories or something like that. So for shit. each hour that you sleep, that's how much food you're gonna burn off. So you got to you got to basically watch how much like how much, uh, you know, bodily fluids you're burning out, how much food like calories you're burning um, to gain rest, because if you get sleep deprived, then you could also like uh, what happens is the weight that you're carrying, like the gear and shit that you're carrying actually depletes like your uh, capacity to carry like 80 pounds, like depletes down if you're like not well rested. So are you telling me if I want to lose calories, I just need to sleep more? I mean, I yeah. mean, yeah, you could hibernate, I guess, <laughs> yeah. but you'd have to sleep a long ass time and well, not drink it, anything. Yeah. And as you walk, it actually doubles the amount of calories you burn. If you're standing, you're slowly burning calories. And then if you sleep, it's like the slowest way you can burn calories. <laughs> How do you manage you sleep, this? Like, do you have to have a spreadsheet on a second screen while you're doing this? No, no. So you literally like there's four meters at the bottom that tell you you just hold the tab button and it'll it'll show the meters like and it shows like a little temperature meter, or a little eyeball that like represents your rest. And then it, uh, uh, like a wa- like a water droplet for your your water, and then a stomach for your calories. Damn. Um, Yikes. Yeah. So it, it's pretty brutal, but it's it's so much fun just like going around and scav- scavenging shit. And the scariest thing ever is like so the uh there's wolves in the game, and if they see you, they come after your ass and they want to fucking piece of you. So like, oh, this gross. is like that Liam Neeson then the gray, <laughs> kinda, kinda, yeah. So um the way that they give you give it away is so there's uh an audio cue and you'll hear like a murder of crows like cawing and what that means is there's either a dead carcass somewhere which you can scavenge off of like say a dead deer or something Mm -hmm. you can pull food off of or it means there's a fucking wolf nearby yeah Mm -hmm. and and a wolf sees you he's chasing after your ass unless you get inside of a car or get inside of a building before he gets to you and so there's several different like uh what do you call them conditions you can be in like if a wolf bites you it'll say like oh wolf bite injuries or whatever unless he completely mauls your ass and you're dead mm. but um like you have like injuries and yet you, you have to like find particular supplies in order to like clean the wound and like bandage it and then you actually and then on top of all that shit the clothes that you're wearing you have to take care of your clothes because eventually your clothes get worn out and you have to like patch them up and make sure the like they keep the wind chill off of you and like it's it's just a very Damn. high maintenance game. Can I, I didn't be, realize yeah. it was all about that. Yeah, can I yeah. be honest? This sounds like sounds like management the game disguised as like a survival. Because I mean, the survival genre to me has always been like too managementy. I feel like it's more often than not about like finding your basic needs than like 
progressing a story or like trying See, to get to that cool place or something. Yeah, and I can I can I can understand that for sure. And I, I, I like that certain level of management. Um, but the fact that they threw an actual episodic story on top of it makes it mm-hmm. that much better. So like I'm yeah. playing through the story mode right now and give it, having actual goals and having like they're, they're, the characters so far are pretty like decently interesting characters. Like they leave a lot of like mystery for like to keep you curious, to keep you going. Um, and you're learning about uh, different survivors that you find along the way and stuff. And uh, on top of that, you know, you still got to manage the standard stuff from the regular survival mode. Um, so I, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot there. There's a lot of game, especially since it was on sale for $14 for right. Steam sale. There's a lot to do in the game. And on top of all that, there's a huge sense of adventure because like the areas are huge and there's a lot to hmm. explore. And there's tons of houses you can go in and loot and find stuff. I so, like yeah. the fact that you're talking about how you would take like natural indicators of what the present situation is. Like if the birds are, you know, circling, like it might mean there's food there, might mean there's a wolf. Like I think that's cool because oftentimes there's a lot of trees. I'm around a lot of nature here. And oftentimes I'll see like vultures or birds or hawks or whatever, like circling something. I'm like, oh, something's dead over there. So that's <laughs> yeah, just cool that something like a mechanic like yeah. that would be in the game. You know, that's that's pretty neat. Yeah, it's it's cool, man. I just I don't know. I'm really enjoying it. I I've wanted something micromanaged you like that. I guess if it doesn't appeal to you like all that micromanagement stuff, then you may not like it. But it's definitely something for me, especially yeah. someone who like you know Fallout Three is like my favorite game. And when I heard they were putting a like, survival mode in Fallout New Vegas when it came out, I was like, yo, mm-hmm. yeah. But then I heard yeah. ammo, ammo costs weight, and I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'll peace out. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, uh, but um. Yeah, the uh, the one last thing is like the disclaimer at the beginning of the game says like don't take anything you learn in this game as actual survival skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, but, when I get yeah. lost in the wild, if I hold W on my keyboard, I'll still keep moving. Yeah, yeah forward. exactly. Just bring a PS4 controller with you; it'll be fine. <laughs> right. So if I want to eat something, I have to pull up my inventory menu, click <laughs> on this can of beans, and then open it. <laughs> but do I have what to? What video cook games the taught beans? me? Yeah. I don't know. For for me, like I remember, I was really excited about We Happy Few when they showed it back at like E3 and stuff, and I like I did kickstart it. So like I guess disclosure there. But then when I got my hands on like one of the alpha builds, and I found out like it's hella survivally. Like it's not yeah, just what like, I heard. It's not just exploring this weird dystopian universe, but it's like I gotta eat, I gotta drink, I gotta sleep, I gotta do all this stuff. It's like huh. it kind of bogged down the experience for me, and I was kind of turned off to it, honestly. Yeah, so, I could see that for sure. Yeah, but if someone were interested in picking up the Long Dark right now after the Steam sale is over, how much would it be? I think it's regularly forty dollars, which is what? why it was such a deal. Yeah. Damn. What? what? That's yeah, like it was expensive indie game. It was sixty percent off. That's like the be, witness. It must be pretty yeah. robust, then I would think. I mean, to be fair, I would, I would have, I like, I was on the edge of paying forty dollars for it before, honestly, because okay. I just, I mean, and there's a lot of content in the game there for you. If okay. you if you're into survival games, so how's the music? Mm. The music, it's very subtle. It's not too over the top. It's very uh, relaxed. A lot of piano. Um, like and Minecraft. it's, it's uh, sometimes it kind of pick up picks up if you know like you're getting close to dying or something like that. The music becomes like more dire, uh, so to speak. And I will say like one quick story was, uh, and that first time I was like surviving, I can't. I made the mistake. So I was at the top of this hill and it was like a fell firewatch tower because I was up there and I was just wandering, wandering up there and I was like, oh shit. So I, maybe I can find supplies here. And uh, so I ended up finding like a bed roll and uh, some beef jerky and a couple cans of pop or something like that. And I was like, shit, like it's dark out and I'm out of sleep completely i'm completely sleep deprived almost so and i was like okay so my calories and my water are pretty good um but it's pretty damn cold out here so i thought if i went in this little shelter kind of like just out of the wind i could throw it on the bed roll and like at least rest for two more hours so i could get to this uh fire watch tower on the other side that was actually intact so i could make camp there and it was on the opposite hill but it wasn't too far so i was like okay so i'm just gonna pass out here and then I woke up and realized my uh, body temperature was to the point where I was at hypothermia risk. And I was like, what? fuck. Mm. What? Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, shit, I didn't think it was going to be that cold. So I'm like trotting down this hill. And what hypothermia does to you in this game is it drops your, it makes your th- fatigue deplete three times as fast. So, so you were just I'm, borked. 
your dude zone. i was like it was snowing really hard i couldn't see where the fuck i was going and like just walking between these two like hills near mountains basically and i was like dude i'm so so fucked my health is just like bop 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 like depleting <laughs> like a motherfucker and then i hear howling uh nice. was it <laughs> the like, wind i was like are you fucking kidding me and so these two wolves i hear like <laughs> like growling at me i'm like shit so what i did was i threw down some food and i backed up and the wolf came up and ate that food and then there was another wolf right and, behind that one and then it ate you and then it, i backed up again and I threw down some more food, came up and ate that food and ran away. And I was like, okay, okay, I'm good. And then I keep walking. I'm like, shit, no, I'm not. My health is like at the very fu- fucking end. And then I basically, the screen started to go blurry. My character started falling over. And then I died of hypothermia. Rip. So yeah, I lasted two days. Rip. That's the longest you lasted? Yep. Yikes. It's two whole days. My God. Uh, Jack, you've played quite a few games this past week haven't you a bunch yeah i spent i went for quantity over quality this uh holiday weekend and just in preparation for the 10 days of tiny disc game of the year time and so i just hit up a bunch uh last night you and i robert we got in on some of that uh free destiny 2 up to level 7 uh full game unlock <clears throat> uh, for free and what you know what i take away from that is that it's an okay game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The shooting is okay. It's largely okay, but it is much better than Destiny 1 in pretty much every single aspect that I can think of. And it runs like a dream on PC. Like it runs so much better than on console. Um, and I'm just, it's just a showpiece for my graphics card, for my ultra wide screen. It just, it runs like smooth butter. I love looking at it. I love the experience of, seeing what i'm seeing on the screen i don't know if i'm loving the experience of just playing the game though you know it just seems like a first person kind of diablo kind of borderlandsy loot fest and then it's kind of over and you know then you raid and you do the end game stuff so i definitely could not see myself spending full price for this game not at all i could see myself though once it gets to 30 dollars, then let's talk you know then i might have something to do but I, I know they're coming out with new DLC coming soon, but there's just too many other games for me. I, I, I wasn't expecting, though, to like it this much because in a year where you have a new Call of Duty coming out, you have a new Battlefront 2, you know, for FPS has seemed pretty strong. And I did not think that I'd be saying this at this point of the year, but Destiny 2 is by far the strongest of those three, you know, and arguably runs uh, much better on PC than Battlefront 2, which Battlefront 2 looks good. I've been on the record already saying that it's a great looking game, and it is. But Destiny 2 just is more rock solid for me. Uh, so I'm surprised that I'm like, oh, if I want to play an FPS, that's probably the one I'm, that came out this year. That's probably the one I'm going to play. I can't really think of one that I want to play other than that. So I guess that's a good thing. Yeah. I don't know. For me, <laughs> playing through that free trial has because I remember like a couple days ago, Jack, I asked you, hey. Destiny 2 is on sale for $38 on PC. Right. Is that enough for you to bite the bullet? And after spending you were about what? To. After spending what, two or three hours last night with the game, mm-hmm. I have come to the conclusion that I would have killed myself if I spent $38 on this game. <laughs> it's, too, it's just too much. It's just not my bag. Now, if you have like a group of like, I don't know how big the parties can be in this game, but if you have a group of I, like four or eight. I think fire teams can only be up to three people, I think. Oh, that's it? Really? Like for the okay. end game raids and strikes and all that? Yeah. I would. I would most definitely not play this game solo. I wouldn't recommend it for that. Uh, even with the campaign mode and everything, I would only recommend it if you have a good group that's going to play regularly and meet regularly. Yeah. Then I could see that being fun. It's a good co-op game. It's just a lot of fun actually. It's co-op. Um, that's the strength of the game. But now I'll wait for thirty bucks. I'll wait till. I mean, look at Destiny One. Look how cheap it got and how fast it did. You know, with the Taken King, with like all the bonuses and all that. If we wait till like May or June when all the DLC comes out, whatever, like it's going to be you know much much cheaper. And I'm totally fine waiting. I don't need to play this that bad. Yeah, same here. I think for me, what makes me kind of so bored with the game is that I love Borderlands 2. Like, I played a lot of hours of that game, probably more hours than I should have about a game where the villain gloats about his diamond horse that shits diamonds or whatever. 
Uh, but for me, this game, it had like destiny two has a lot of similarities to borderlands in terms of like the gameplay loop, right? Like you go here, shoot a bunch of boys, use your skills, shoot more boys, and then you get loot and then you do it again and again and again and again and again. Um, but it, I think it's just like the delivery of the other characters or just like the writing of it. It's just so mundane and boring. Even the times when like the characters are trying to be funny, I'm kind of like, ha ha, this was manufactured to be hilarious. And I too am finding this very funny. Yeah. yeah. Bungie has definitely been a company that takes their stories a little too serious, a little bit building the lore of the master chief and everything. And then saying he's dead and saying he's back alive. Spoilers for halo 3 but whoops yeah like you know like they just take themselves very very serious you know they're like the hardcore band of video game developers they just are all up their own butt with their with their lore so absolutely uh yeah i i definitely agree with you though the voice acting the reading was like real dry real wooden uh real pedestrian so again don't come to this game for a single player story come to it for how awesome it looks and plays on pc the loot fest, the grind, embrace the grind, and uh, co-op gameplay with your friends. <clears throat> that, those are the reasons to play it. Mm-hmm. You've been playing uh, anything else? So Tekken 7. I cracked Yo. that open. It was on sale for 20 bucks on the Steam sale, which is now over now. Namkai Bando. Ban- Namkai, Namkai Bando. Bando. Namkai Bando. <laughs> my Namkai favorite Bando. Banjo-Kazooie uh, sequel. <laughs> Namkai Bando Kazooie. <laughs> Kajui, <laughs> this is it. That's Kajui. it. Done. It's over. Oh, Good night, man. people. Awesome. Kaj- no, Kajui. I'm just gonna leave we the podcast fucking, now. Fucking Wookie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so <laughs> I can't even talk right now. So, so Tekken Seven. Tekken 7 is, is good. Guess what, y'all? That is just some good quality-ass Tekken right there. I've been playing uh, Tekken uh, since back in the day. PS1, PS2, PS3. Tekken 3 was the shit. Tekken, Tekken 2 was Tekken the shit. Tournament 2. No, I didn't get into any of those. I, I dropped out of Tekken after Tekken 3, and then I picked it up like 10 years ago, maybe on the PSP? Pretty sure I played a little bit of Tekken there. That, but that like Tekken 5 spinoff? Like Dark Resurrection? Is that what it was called? Nah, I don't even remember. No, it's just a straight up fighting game. But anyways, I've been off the Tekken train for a long time and I've come back and guess what? It's evolved. It's better than ever before. Mm -hmm. The music's awesome. The graphics look great. It controls great. It's got Akuma in it from Street Fighter. Like what? (laughs) Who would expect that? And then the bigger surprise to me is that he plays really well. If you're used to how Akuma plays in 2D Street Fighter, you can totally own with him and do like the... The all his supers, all his ultras, all his regular moves are there, and I'm just like, wow, this translates so great to 3D. I would not expect that because there have been 3D Street Fighter games that have come out in the past that are totally terrible. So yeah. it's more surprise that it actually they got it to work. I'm totally cool with the game. I can't wait till Geese Howard comes out on Tekken <laughs> Seven. I I'm having fun. The music is so stupid and awesome. The characters, uh, Elisa, she looks straight out of Final Fantasy Seven, and now you have. Uh, What's his name from Final Fantasy Seven? That's gonna join the roster now. You Titan mean Seven? You mean Fifteen Noctis? Noctis, yeah. Oh, I said Seven, yeah. You did. Everything's Final Fantasy Seven, dude. All of it. So yeah, it's all just Final Fantasy Seven. No, Noctis is gonna be in it too. Like I think he totally fits. When I first heard that news that he was gonna join the game, I was like, ah, eh, whatever. I, you know, who cares? Now that I've played it, I'm like, no, he actually fits in this universe like really well. I really so, want to play Noctis. Yeah, me too. Me too. Wait, and does he just, does he cost money? Yeah, I'm sure he does. Okay, yeah. yeah. And I would pay it though. I totally would. I think this game is fun. I think it's it's got some good modes. It's got a lot of loot and unlocking and like you know elevating up your your Q level or your key or whatever it's called. Your Q, uh, your grade. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know, man. It looks good. It's some more ass tech. And I'm playing Eddie Gordo. I'm playing Law. I'm playing what? all the old all the old uh, favorites. Yeah, Kazuya. Yeah, my wife was like, "What are you playing over there?" Because all she heard was a bunch of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I love, real, I love that his full name is literally Martial Law. It's yeah, so great, Martial Law. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. No, all his moves are there too. I love it, man. So yeah. I'm having fun. I mean, I don't want to talk about it too long. I haven't played too much of it, but I'm glad I bought it. I would totally play more of it. I will say though, what the hell is with those long ass load times in between every match? Load times are way too long for me. Really? Are you experiencing that? Yes, dude. I'm getting like I'm, a minute long load times. It's been a while since I played, but never has it been more than like 20, 30 dude, seconds for me. I know. I've been I've been I'm on an SSD too, man, and I don't know what it is, but the load times between matches are way too long. 
sounds like I mean, something like, in your settings or something. If I'm noticeably being long, dude. I'll, I'll check it out, but it was it was something that definitely stood out. So played that. I played a bunch of other games too. I'm not going to talk about them all right now. I mean, there's there'll be time for can, that later. Can, can I just can I just say about Tekken Seven, the slow mo is so good, right? It's fun. It's, it's it, it adds a new layer to the game when you when you both have just a little bit of life left and then you both make a hit at the same time. It just adds a lot more suspense. I think it's a really intelligent way to kind of address that and yeah. add drama to an already dramatic like moment. Like who's gonna win? Who's gonna get this last hit? Yeah. Because what I love about it is that at that point, like your input doesn't matter. It's taken your last input, and now it's just yeah. seeing which which animation is ahead in frames. You know. Yeah. And it, yeah. And the hitbox porn in Tekken Seven about like. If, if you're executing a move where you're sweeping low and someone's punching high, they're going to miss you because you're sweeping low. You know what I mean? Like your whole body mm-hmm. is lower than their punch. And yeah. like seeing it in slow-mo where they zoom in and it just it looks so it looks straight out of like a well choreographed movie or something. It's really great. For anyone listening that doesn't know exactly what we're talking about, just imagine like a hundred yard dash in the uh in the Olympics and then like two people or three people being really close to finishing at the same time. But then it just zooms in and like slow motion. So you see who crosses the finish line first. That's kind of like what this is. But just imagine two people fighting instead and who gets the last hit. Yeah. Like who punches first or whatever. Right. So what what game I do want to spend a little bit of time on is that, man, I found a game that is really taking a lot of my time and a lot of my mind share. Whoa. And it's it's giving me that feel like, oh, no, this is a game I really, really enjoy. And I really like like some of the best games in the world, you know, have or in, in my experience have ever done to me. And it's just like grips you and like you just think about it constantly. And that game is Neo. Whoa. And I was not expecting to fall into a total Neo hole this last weekend, this last uh, Friday don't, night, Black Friday. That's all I did. Call it, don't call it that, please. The Neo hole. So weird. <laughs> the I'm Neo just, hole. <laughs> it does sound bad. But... uh <laughs> Horrible, no, absolutely dude, I, horrible. It's one of those games, though, that just totally engrossed me. I was obsessed with it, obsessed with it. I played like five, six straight hours. I looked up. I'm like, shit, it's fucking midnight. Mm-hmm. And I was like, but I don't want to stop at all. I don't want to, but I will. But I don't want to. I want to keep playing. And I was like, man, it's been a long time since I felt this way. The game is so fucking hard, though. But it's oh, really yeah. deep. And I love the deep combat system in it. And I like I just. I mean, I the challenge is there. Like, for sure, it's a hard game. I don't know if I can say I'm enjoying the challenge, but I'm enjoying progressing, you know, and I'm willing to do what I need to do to progress in that game. So I'm at, like, the second or third. I'm about seven hours in. I'm at, like, the second or third level where you – the big open area where you, there's that big boss on the boat and stuff, and yeah. I still got to kill him. I don't know how I'm going to kill him because he just kills me in, like, two hits, and then I'm dead. <laughs> so I'll have to figure that out. But I am – enjoying that game much more than i thought i would i almost totally overlooked it i'm glad i didn't uh that game is going to be coming up during game of the year discussions for sure in in a few categories i can think of so i'm i'm man team ninja's back like they are back in a strong way and that is so cool to hear i don't think uh, itagaki was part of this game he left team ninja some years ago so if they're doing this without itagaki like wow like awesome so neo sick i mean that's all i really gotta say unless you guys have any questions about it yeah, I, I mean, I'm just waiting to get that complete edition because I know is that out yet? The complete edition? Yeah, oh, that's yeah. what I got. Yeah, and yeah. I actually oh, okay. spent, and there was it was not on sale either. Uh, I spent full price on it because it was just the game that I wanted to play this weekend. It's like, no, I want to play this. Steam obviously has that deal where if you play for less than two hours or less than two weeks, uh, you can return and get your money back. So I was like, fine. Worst case scenario, I'll just get a refund, but I'm going to buy it because I want to try it. And man, it really sucked me in. And, I'm, and I was getting to the two hour mark. I'm like, well, here it is. If I keep playing, there's no way I can return this. And I was like, fuck it. Let's keep it. This game's hard as shit, but it's good. And I'll just, I'll just get better. I just it, good. Yeah. I was going to say that, but also I hate the fact that you hate souls, but you're into this. It's so weird to me. I it just, is. I'm not there, trying to say it makes sense. It really doesn't the, because the, there's so the many Samurai things. Ninja, no, the Samurai Ninja aesthetic plays a lot into this for me. And I think there's just a lot of Jap- J- Japanese game development in this game as well that is not in the Dark Souls games. They're, they are from Japanese developers. It do, no, I'm not saying, they're, fr- I'm not saying they're not from so- uh, Japanese hey. development. I'm just saying they... I'm saying that it, the feel of it, I think it's just because, like I said, it's in like feudal Japan. Like rather I than guess. like medieval European castles and dragons and shit, 
Like I'm just less interested in that. I'm more interested in yokai and, and Japanese fishermen. Although, can we talk about how I didn't say this last week because I knew, like Jack, you were about to play it. The main character isn't Japanese. I don't think he is. No, he's, he's he. No, he's a uh, Irish, isn't he? He's fucking. His name is fucking William. And I just yeah. Before I played the game, I was always under the assumption like, oh, that's Japanese ass looking motherfucker. Yeah, no, he's <laughs> Irish, and he's like, and it has to do with like the war between Spain and England. It's a funny thing. Yeah, and no, it's just, it's just, it's just the up in Japan. It's just The Witcher if it was developed by Japanese people. That's a weird story beat, though. Like, a Japanese company would make a game about an Irishman coming to Japan and killing yeah. yokai. That's a weird oh, thing. Did Did you, uh, in the first area, equip the top hat and only the top hat? Because that's what I did. Okay, no. But also, <laughs> I did get, if you get the Steam version, and Colin, when you do get this version, you get a really either stupid or dope, depending on your personal taste, uh, samurai hat that has a giant red valve on the front forehead. <laughs> Like a giant one, and dude, it's like one of the it's like one of the strongest piece of armor in my arsenal. I wow. haven't I, I haven't found anything stronger than it the entire time I've been playing. I'm seven hours in. Everything I find is not as strong as that. So I'm glad I got wow. that. Wow, wow, we yeah, yeah. But no, it that... might look stupid, you might think, or it might look cool. I I kind of tend to think it looks stupid, but I keep it on anyways. Yeah, now you're making me want to fire Neo up again, even though my PS4 has been dedicated to Horizon for the past like week. Dude, Neo but is is very good. It's yeah, just it's another really just another game I need to play. Yeah, well, it is. It absolutely is. But that should do it for the video games. So let's talk about some news. So let's kick it off with probably the biggest piece of news that came out. This isn't necessarily video game related, but it's still kind of nerdy in a way. It came out today. The Avengers Infinity War trailer. Ah, oh, where do we even start, guys? I did see a leaked version of this, like from someone's cell phone footage at Comic Con, like way back in September or maybe even July. I can't remember when it was, but it was months ago for sure. And uh, it, it's the same thing. It's Josh Brolin. You get a good, good long look at Thanos' face. You get to see uh, Spider-Man's uh, new uniform. So you get cool. to see some interesting things, man. But it is a very dark and foreboding uh, teaser trailer, is it not? Well, yes, I mean, it is very dark. This is supposed to be like that dark middle chapter in the big, like in the whole MCU, right? Like this is supposed to be the middle point. Right. What did you guys think of it? Um, I, I mean... So, like, I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. I'm not a huge, like, comic book movie guy, big Marvel guy. Um, but I thought the trailer was pretty hyped, man. I thought it was, it was a pretty solid trailer. It definitely, like, even though I don't really care that much, it definitely got, it got me excited to see it. Um, and just, like, seeing everybody, like, you know... I mean, like like we said already, it's very dark. And seeing, uh, like, Spider-Man in the Iron Spider suit and everyone, like, coming together and then... And just getting ready to fight. I assume they're going to fight Thanos, right? I mean, it's, duh. They'll actually um, befriend him. He right, becomes the right. leader of the... And Avengers. I don't know if... It looks like Loki's going to play the bad guy again, based on the trailer. Yeah, um, he had the Tesseract with him that he stole after Thor Ragnarok, so yeah. Right, right. Um, I'm just... The biggest thing for me is I'm just curious to see how they handle all those characters in one movie, because it's just so so much and they're throwing in the guardians the guardians of the galaxy guys too yeah yeah i mean um, they're saying this movie's gonna be upwards of three hours long yeah <laughs> so, right i mean they, wow. they kind of need it if they're if they're gonna put all those characters in there i mean you don't want to have another spider-man 3 where they have like we're gonna throw fucking three villains in there and have no character development mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so, yeah that was that was so good i don't know sam for, rainy yeah. out of our marvel movies people <laughs> yeah. see for me when i saw that trailer i was i mean i was like should I be recognizing a lot of these? I don't recognize a lot of these people. <laughs> Cause Black I haven't, Panther's new. Yeah. Yeah. I just haven't seen that many uh, Marvel movies, I guess. And I also just don't like Captain America. Like, this is before even fucking, like, the Marvel movies came out. I was just like, Captain America's dumb. Uh, so okay, I was just Captain never, America's dumb. He's dumb. He's boring. <laughs> Winter Soldier is a good movie, and, dude. Yeah, Winter I've, Soldier is good. I've heard that, like, it. yeah, some of the Captain America movies are really good, especially uh, the one where, like, Spider Man first shows up. Is that no, Civil War? Civil War, Captain yeah. America, Civil War, yeah. That's the third one. And, and yeah, I, like, now I kind of want to see them, but also still, like, Captain America's dumb. <laughs> I don't like him. He's a dumb He's hero. funny. He's funny. Who the fuck uses a shield as a wet? Like, this is stupid. I don't know. I don't know. What, what What's the name of uh, Captain America's actor again? I forget his name. Chris Evans? Chris, Chris Evans. Evans. Yeah. Chris Evans. 
damn, he looking good though. Infinity War though, he's got like longer ass <laughs> hair. He's got that that beard going on. I'm like, damn. Yeah, they they did a redesign, I guess, which is yeah, like, it, it looks I like better. He's a, he's, he's a darker and edgier Captain America. <laughs> it, to Colin's me, it looks over better. here like like goals. <laughs> yeah, like, same though. Look, look, I wish I could grow a beard like his, that. So, it, so his sad. normal his normal suit looks so dorky, man. I'm I'm not a fan of it. But this they I mean, Captain, Captain, you Captain, seen, I mean, dude, you're thinking of like the first Captain America movie. I don't know. You haven't seen the other ones. I, I think yeah, he's a lot true. better. That's true. It's very true. I agree. He's but, dorky looking into the first one. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, but overall, I will probably most definitely be catching this movie. Just like, even if I'm not going to catch all the references because I haven't seen all the like movie, the Marvel movies building up to this. I still think it looks really cool. I still think the story is going to be like it's going to be like pinnacle of comic book stories. You know what I mean? Like this is one of the biggest stories in Marvel. That's been it's told the penultimate, right? Because then there's going to be in two or three years, there's going to be the second Infinity War movie and that'll be the end. Yeah, the whole universe. It'll be it. So they'll have to they'll reboot it, obviously, and do a whole new universe. But this is approaching the end here. So I have two takeaways from this trailer. The first takeaway is that I really like Thanos's lines in the trailer. Uh, Just go watch it. I just think his lines are really well um, written, really well delivered. It makes for a good bad guy, compelling bad guy. His CG, I'm not so hot on. He looks a little weird to me. He looks very, very Josh Brolin-y. He looks Hellboyish look, to me. I wish he looked. I wish he, he does looked more Hellboyish. No, nah, I wish he looked more uh, Thanosy from the comics. So I wish it was a little more faithful to the comics, not so much to Josh Brolin. But I digress. So the last thing that I'm going to take away from this is that a lot of people are speculating that this is the movie where many of the Avengers, multiple of the Avengers, are going to die, yes. perish, cease to be. Yes. And what? Why are you such a hater, dude? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, because it's always cool when heroes die. It's sad. It's going to be sad, though. So one one like the money shot right of this trailer was watching the Avengers, uh, Captain America's team, whatever, uh, running towards the camera. Right. Uh, And you're just purported to think that, okay, they're going to be fighting the bad guys. Giant army battles. Yeah, that was a cool part of the trailer. But but what you need to pay attention to is what is not there. Thanos had the infinity glove right in the trailer and he and you saw him punch Iron Man and basically knock him out. Like, it does not look good for Iron Man. And then you look at that last scene where all the Avengers are running towards the camera. Who's not there? Robert Downey Iron Jr. Man I mean, Iron is Man. not there. Yeah, everyone else is there, but Iron Man is not there. And I'm just like, oh, shit. They're actually going to kill Iron, Iron Man. Iron Man has movie. went Robert Downey. Ho, ho. Oh, oh dad jokes but, the podcast. Uh, but <laughs> see, for me, I think part of what's a little annoying is, like, we all kind of expect Iron Man to die or, like, in some way retire. And it's just unfortunate that, like, things happening around the movie are kind of affecting the movie. Because everyone knows, like, RDJ has been in this game for, like, a decade like a little over a decade he's making right? way too much money and, on these <laughs> yeah but like it's been in the news that he's you know like in the recent years he's been like yeah, i'm getting a little sick and tired of this shit like i want to i don't well, want to iron it. man anymore i don't want to pump any more iron he's so getting fucking old bro dude yeah he's so always like, been old like i feel like since he's been doing this he's always been old as tony stark but no one else can do tony stark like him so i'm just saying you know it just read between the lines like pay attention to what you see in that trailer but also pay attention to what is not what you don't see in the trailer, right? Yeah, read, read outside the lines, too. Ooh, so, yeah. So, let's uh, rapid fire this news. Yes. Let's go. Uh, up next, mobile version of Player Notes Battlefront. I can't even get through that without, like, shaking my fucking head. How and why <laughs> who ever thought this would be a good idea? Yeah, Player Notes Battlegrounds is getting a mobile version that's going to launch first in China because China is, like, the biggest market for PUBG right now. Yeah, which, it's being published yeah. most notably by Tencent, who yep. actually has owns Riot Games. And has stakes in uh, Activision Blizzard. Yeah, they're huge. Yeah, they're fucking massive, and you never hear about them because the Chinese games market is just so insular. But man, so PUBG on mobile. Why would you ever want this? I can understand why people, the decision makers, would think it's a good idea. But like, is this really going to be a true version of that game? It's going to be a shadow of itself. And I don't know if you guys know this as well, but there's a tr- free to play version of Call of Duty in China as well. And they Gross. just recently, even grosser though. They just recently uh, announced plans that they're going to have a battle royale m- mode in the free-to-play Call of Duty in China. Ugh, the battle fuck? royale, sixteen-player battle royale, not even a hundred. Oh, so that, I, that's I think less. that's boring. What? <laughs> yeah, so, so it's just all kinds of shit. I was watching uh, the kind of funny games daily about this today, and uh, he, Greg, talked or Greg Miller quoted a tweet as saying, uh, it, "It it was uh, it was talking about the Animal Crossing mobile game, right?" And it was like. Oh, how's the new mobile crossing or uh, Animal Crossing game? Mobile game. Oh, it's it's great. I love it. Is it a good game? 
No, <laughs> it's that's exactly what PUBG is going to be. I feel like. Oh my God! What if what if this mobile version is like? Okay, you landed. Now, uh, do you loot a gun or do you run to safety and then you tap the button and it's like you have to wait an hour until you get yeah, safety. Yeah, I was just thinking you about that. Like, how are they going to like <laughs> wait twenty to minutes this. to to get a good gun or pay twenty battle points to get your gun right now? If there's one thing, it's going to be it's going to be janky. Look oh, how yeah. successful PUBG is on PC. It's still janky. L- L- and let's it, it did you guys way. hear as well too that that's official 2000 release now if they hold true like it's coming out in 2017 yeah it's coming uh, out December 12 yeah December so 12? that's a 2017 game gentlemen yep wow. uh, for me it's like look even even like really high end PCs sometimes have trouble playing PUBG at 60 FPS on the highest of settings you know what I mean like how the fuck is my phone gonna play this game <laughs> Yeah, yeah, your phone. Like, I mean, shit. I'm still concerned for the Xbox version. Let's let's not get ahead seriously. of ourselves, boys. Yeah. Like, seriously, how how the fuck? Like, this this game is gonna run properly on an Xbox One. I mean, shit, Jack's over there. You're running a fucking 1080 Ti. Can't even run it on at like 60 frames per second at highest settings. Wait, like, that's like, ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were eight, saying you can't. No, I'm getting 88 frames a second. Yeah, I can't get 100 on ultra high. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said you were running at a medium because of that. No. Oh, me. okay, but still, that's still that's still pretty bad. Though. It's suboptimal, I'll say that. Yeah, for, that's for what I'm that saying. Game, that doesn't look like it should, you know, have problems going over 100 frames in a second, but it Absolutely. does. So I agree with that for sure. It is. It needs optimization bad. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, I. I mean, I feel like they should be focusing on that before they keep adding, like fucking vaulting and all that shit and but, mobile versions. But yeah, speaking of sub, versions. speaking of suboptimal things, so Destiny Two has been getting a little bit of heat recently. Not a good way. Uh, people have found out that XP in that game is not being awarded properly. Like you can, like there are certain missions you can do daily, or like you can repeat them, and you'll keep getting good XP for it. But even though the screen says you earned, you earned nine thousand XP when you checked your bar, you actually don't earn as much. And like the more of it you play, the less XP you learn. It's like it's like a scaling thing. And yeah. uh, behind the scenes, there's no way of actually like it doesn't visually tell you. Except by looking at your uh, XP bar, it explicitly yeah. told you in the past. They've since patched this, patched this out, but in the past, it explicitly told you you've got five thousand XP. It would tell you, you get the same amount every time, but then the bar would yep. just fill up less. And they were exactly. like, d- they were like doing this on purpose. It's fucking rotten, dude. It's really gross yeah. and, to and misrepresent that shit. What What's important though about XP is that like it's not just oh man I can't level as fast. It's like you hit level twenty and then every time you level up after that you earn a bright engram, which is what you can use to buy like cosmetics and like loot boxes for cosmetics and like cool weapon skins and stuff like that. Uh, and the fact that it takes longer and longer and longer to get these bright engrams means like hey why spend thirty hours grinding when you can just buy buy silver with your real world dollars and get the same effect right they, just give us some of that yeah, money it's so terrible dude and they finally and they did actually when they got busted right like they're like oh we're gonna fix this we're gonna change it like immediately they did but it's like they just, just like oh when shit yeah you caught us right-handed yeah they didn't get in front of it and say oh f- fuck we we see this is messing up they waited till they got busted just to fix it and they have to thank mickey mouse and fucking ea for <laughs> blowing up the spot last week otherwise this would have gotten way more attention and drawn way more ire that it deserved to right but oh, i think yeah, people you're are right. just fatigued i think people are just you're fatigued right. from all the effort we put into getting uh battlefront 2 you know addressed whatever yeah. that means uh I th- but i think it's just it's just so fucked up man it's another reason why i don't want to play destiny even though they fixed it it's just like fuck you guys i mean part of it too i think is like they saw what happened to battlefront 2 right it's like they just watched someone get murdered for what they're doing and they're like shit we gotta we gotta change we gotta change yeah. things now or we're fucked yeah and it's not like they're doing the same thing they're just finding an other way to fuck people over right and <laughs> like, like wow. it's all catching up to them because uh today wednesday they were going to live stream like their third live stream in a row in like consecutive days where they were going to reveal more information about curse of osiris their new Ooh, expansion yeah, dlc wait. that can't comes wait. out yeah it comes out next week and then they were like hey we're gonna cancel this live stream and they didn't really give a like reason why, but they said we're gonna we're gonna give you better, more up to date, pertinent information on a uh-huh. blog post, which is like yeah. what the fuck kind of PR is? Are you telling yeah. me that in the live stream you wouldn't give me pertinent information? Or are you trying to do something right. better now? Like yeah, they must have been catching some serious heat to just drop something like this big with this short notice, right? Their their messaging there, their communications department's got to be on fire a little bit right now. Yeah, because this is them saying like, "Hey, we're we're deciding not to do videos to advertise our new expansion that you should totally yeah, buy." Yeah, to that's coming money. out next week. Yeah, yeah, seriously. 
Ooh, so doesn't look good. Not a good look, Bungie. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Yeah, I. You know, I guess that's what Destiny Two is. I mean, the thing is, people are still playing that game. It's just people are getting antsy about it. Which is, yeah, it's yeah. it's just not building any more goodwill. It's not making God, me I love, better. I love it. modern video gaming, guys. Don't me, you? Me too, it's a great guys. time. It's a great time. <laughs> it's, it's the, it was literally the best of times and the worst of times. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to dwell on this too long either. But you know, we were talking about EA earlier, and yeah. their stock is at an all time high. Like again, like let's just face the facts. It is. However, it is not really in lockstep with the rest of the industry. Isn't that right, Robert? Yeah. No. So here's the thing. It's like. EA stock is, I think, $15 above what it was at this time last year, but like a lot of other big game stocks like Ubisoft and all that, their stocks are going up, they're climbing, they're getting better, they're getting gooder, they're getting better and great. Whereas EA is kind of like being stagnant, which is kind of showing like, hey, maybe y'all fucked up. It's going With down, the, actually. Yeah. Just over yeah. the last three days, like they had a very steep decline. Like I want to say it was like uh, 3% in a day, which is huge. Yeah, absolutely. So wow. they're not happy there. They're they're a little bit on fire as well, too. And again, this is the time of the year where they're expecting their stock to only go up. And to see it go the opposite direction, I think, is what is affecting change in the industry, hopefully. I mean, and, we see how it affects Bungie. We see how it's affecting EA in the future, how it might affect Star Wars in the future, etc. Yeah, and what bothers me, too, is that their chief financial officer, Blake Jorgensen, Jorgensen or whatever, like, he said this thing in a Polygon article that I I cannot wrap my fucking head around because of everything that's happened, but I quote, we're not giving up on the notion of microtransactions. We're really watching how people are playing the game. We're trying to understand that are there certain modes where microtransactions may be more interesting than not? We're learning and listening to the community to decide how best (laughs) to roll them out in the future. If you're listening to the community, no one wants you to roll them out in the future. (laughs) It's it's like, I don't, it's just like you were saying earlier, Jack, like, they're in the business of microtransactions. The fact that's that they're getting business. this much backlash that's like, hey, we don't like microtransactions. And their response is, we still like them. We're just going to figure out a way to put it in the game without pissing you off. Is like, you guys aren't really No, so here, here's, here's wow. what I'm, I'm thinking right now is going on in the cutting room floor at EA. Like, okay, guys, so what if we just, like, got rid of microtransactions? Everyone just kind of, like, looks at each other like, what... No, no, no! Not even that. Just like what? What? What does that mean? Like, <laughs> what, is this, what, is, what are these words that are that you are uttering to us right now? Like, <laughs> and they're just are, like fucking. All right, well, we have no clue what that means. I just fucking throw this guy out the window. Are you telling so, me we can publish a game without microtransactions? Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> is it a Man. thing? Do they want this? I don't know, man. <laughs> God, and, dude, they're just they're just in in fucking turmoil over there at EA. Yeah, I can't and, say I don't like it. And EA said <laughs> something about how they were originally planning on doing cosmetic microtransactions, but then Disney kind of stepped in and said like, "Hey, don't fuck with the Star Wars canon." You know, like especially when like, our big movie's coming out in two weeks. Yeah, and and it, honestly, I kind of believe that story. I could see that. Oh, 100%. And, and some of, like, I remember reading some of the argument was like, Overwatch can do it, because before Overwatch, there was no pre-established notion of what Tracer should look like, or what Widowmaker should look like. But also, I don't give a fuck. I've read all of the Overwatch lore, I know what they're supposed to look like. I still don't care about seeing them in cool skins. Like, I think it's neat that you're doing that. I don't think of yeah. it as canon. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I don't think of that time of remember when uh, Jesse McCree was a vampire hunter. Remember that? Like, no, no one gives a shit. It's just a cool skin that fits with Halloween. Just do that for Star Wars. No mm-hmm. one's going to see like, I don't know, ballerina Darth Vader and be like, oh, yeah. Remember when he uh, built the Death Star after winning the ballerina competition? It was really great. You know, like, <laughs> no I, one gives a shit. That- that's what blows my mind because that article came out about the uh, uh, I think it was the same same guy right Jorgensen. Yeah, he tried to make CFO. that excuse that you know because it wouldn't fit in with the canon we couldn't do just fucking uh, cosmetic loot boxes. It's like, a tough th- spot to be in. They, but they still, have a like, unique situation, you know. People would buy the shit out of it. It's fucking Star Wars. Like, oh, yeah. there's not really much you can do to like really fuck it just up. Just make a fucking game so good. That people want to pay full price for it. Okay, just do that. Just focus I don't on the know. game that, being good, man. That sounds stupid, Jack. <sighs> you can't be serious. <laughs> I don't know. They're, they're probably gonna like go do something crazy. They're like, okay, we're gonna go get the pandemic team back together. We're gonna make a real Yo. battlefront. We're gonna Whoa. try and make a real battlefront game, and it's just no. 
Yikes. I don't know. Well, uh, yeah, bring, bring back uh, Visceral Games, guys. <laughs> we need to put the <laughs> band back together. Oh, Dead that Space was another 4, story. Battlefront. Can, yeah. Yeah. And I know, I know we're talking about EA real quick, so I'll just end with this. But, like, I guess it came out as well that when uh, they were selling off and firing everybody and dismantling Visceral, they were also in talks of buying Respawn because Respawn was in the process of being bought by a competitor. And it just kind of puts a whole new nefarious spin on that whole development events a couple months ago like wow i can't wait wow. for titanfall 3 where i can buy loot boxes to get the coolest titan the legendary titan i just can't believe <sighs> i just can't believe how you can fuck up a star wars video game right now in 2017 Seriously. like holy fuck it's can't hotter than to, it was back in the 80s it totally can't is. wait to can't wait to buy that elite titan edition of titanfall 3 me too thanks yeah uh, i knew a guy that i knew a guy that had that titanfall the giant titan statue Oh my god! It was like a bane on his life. Like <laughs> he's like, how do I just get rid of this thing? It's too big. Jeez. Uh, Demon Souls. Their servers are shutting down on February twenty eighth, twenty eighteen. Rip. It's Anyone been remember a nice that game? Nine year long run, boys. Sad days. I mean, it's been a long time. Yeah, I think it's. I think it should be okay now. Uh, to shut those down. That's a long, long game passes prime. Yeah, I. I don't. I've. I've. I don't. Wow, I've never beaten Demon Souls. I don't remember ever beating it, honestly. No, I've gotten through like the first dungeon, the first two dungeons. I don't know. It, it's really good. I like it. It's just, I mean, it's basically more Dark Souls, more or less. I just think yeah. Neo's um, better. So why would I go play that? I mean, mechanically, yeah. Like, but, I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of things that Neo has over it. Just better game development, really. Yeah, um, but Neo wouldn't exist without Dark without, Souls. I'd be willing true, to that. True, yeah, true. Absolutely. I'll give it that for sure. I don't know. That'd be like saying, like, why would I play Mario when I can play Felix the Cat, that video game from the 90s that's a platformer, you know? Okay. Okay. I hear where you're coming from. I'm picking up mm-hmm. what you're putting down. Dark Souls, we barely knew ye, and Demon, Demon Souls, Souls. I mean, Jinx. De- Demon Souls, you're a good game, I think. That's what people say. And No, we'll you hate that game. Don't you lie. Long Voyage. Don't I do hate lie. the game, but hey, I mean, I'm sure other people out there love it, so this is a sad day for them. It doesn't really affect me at all, but nah. you know, I I, you dark... still play the single player, right? You just can't have the online. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So, There's so a particular you... boss that does something cool with some sort of co-op thing, but yeah. that you can't do anymore after this. You can still play the down, game. But... Yeah, you just won't yeah. get any messages that say "epic chest ahead" or anything like that, which is unfortunate. yeah, right. Dark Souls yeah. is going to keep going strong for years, though. That game has such a fucking rabid following that is. I don't know if they're. It's going to be a real. It's like going to be a cold day in hell when they finally shut down those servers. Well, well, well I, yeah. right, but like Dark Souls Three is supposed to be the final one, right? They're going to be doing some. Well, yeah, propaganda. for but now, like, I think Dark Souls. Dark Souls as a whole is just like people still PvP and play through Dark Souls all the time, oh. like yeah. the first one. Yeah, right. the first one. Yeah. Not so much the second one. The third one. All right. Last thing, ukulele is coming to the Switch on December 14 to no fanfare, <sighs> to no applause, because no one gives a shit Ooh, about insert, that insert cricket sample here. Yeah, why did you want to include this on the show, Robert? Because I wanted to let you know how bad ukulele is. It's not that great a game. It's God, really imagine, not. Yeah, well, imagine when we were hungry a few months ago for a platformer, and then Mario Odyssey and a bunch of other really great ones like Cuphead came out. Yeah, it's it's like I mean it's it's faithful I guess right to what Banjo Kazooie was and all that which is cool and all, but after like after actually seeing Ukulele come out this year and it's like oh this isn't this isn't good this isn't great and then like later this year Mario Odyssey comes out and just like fucking teaches you what a 3D platformer really is like a a 3D collectathon basically. Like, there's much better games to play on the Switch than Ukulele. I'm just letting you know now. Don't buy it. Don't get excited about the December 14th release. Okay. I, that is all. I, I won't. Please <laughs> don't yes. be excited. Yeah, take take that money <laughs> you were going to use on Ukulele and buy Mario Odyssey. If you've already played it, buy it again. Just, you know, just <laughs> buy more Mario Odyssey, Odysseys. It's good. That does it for us, for the news. We've caught you up on the week. So now I'm going to toss it over to Jack for the question of the week. Question of the week, gentlemen. We haven't Whoa. done a would you rather in a long time. And this doesn't have to be long, but would you rather give up your high school education Ugh. or the okay. internet for life? <laughs> that Discuss. Sucks. That sucks. <laughs> so if okay. we've gone to college and I give up my high school education, does that mean college is given up with it? Well, yeah, you would you wouldn't have the high school, so how could you get into college exactly? 
So you would be a middle school educated, grown up boy. man boy, with <laughs> yep. uh, in your basement with uh, the internet, and in all its glory, in all its net neutral glory. Or the other alternative is you would be as smart as you are today, all the education you received, but there's no internet. So wait, but how the fuck would I have even got here without the internet? Dude, they did it before. The internet didn't yeah, exist before. Things happened before the yeah, internet. The light bulb was made I the understand. fucking atom bomb Project Manhattan without I, the internet. I understand, but like if I'm looking How back I get at get here. No, like <laughs> if I'm looking back at my high school and college careers, how did like the sperm how, <laughs> like, what? reach stop, the stop, egg stop, before stop, the internet? I stop, I'm cut, not fucking d- cut. <laughs> I'm not dumb, okay? I know there's I fucking know, libraries. I know, I know there's physical I'm resources. It would, be, it would just be more work. But throughout my high school and college careers, I've, I mean, I've used the internet for pretty much every fucking paper and shit that I've wrote. True, true. Or have written. And so, I I don't know. It, it would be, fuck, dude. It would suck to do papers. It would be it Lord would of the Rings. It would be your dream, dude. You'd be like, <laughs> damn. You'd be like Gandalf, I, like, with candlelight, you know, like reading, yeah, like, I'd old be like tomes. Gandalf when he's, like, reading about yeah. the fucking, the, the, no the one internet. ring. He's yeah. like, I know it's, that it is precious to me. And it's he's sitting no there. internet, not no electricity. You don't need candlelight <laughs> to read a book, folks. You have a ages. light bulb. <laughs> dude, I don't know. Having, in, like, internet the rest, or not having internet the rest of your life would suck. But, I mean, after I've come this far in my quote-unquote career, my education career, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Like, I, I mean, I'd rather be as intelligible as I am now rather than be a fucking dumb dumb that got a out of middle boy. school. Intelligible? Okay. Intelligible. Okay. He is yeah. intelligible. Okay. Okay. I am also intelligible. <laughs> Good. Okay. So, Colin, anyway, are I don't you know. picking up on your mistake there? Or should I keep yeah. saying intelligible <laughs> yes, until uh, I, you get I, it? I get it. <laughs> I'd rather be the somewhat intelligent boy that I there am now. Go. Instead of being just out of fucking middle school and doing nothing with my life and sitting in a basement because just in a middle school, <laughs> well, dude, I don't know. Dude, my education has done a lot, like changed my life direction completely. Oh, I yeah. I could imagine sure. what the fuck I'd be doing if I was if, if I just stopped going to school after I got out of middle school. I'd still be yeah. in Ohio if I didn't go to college. So that's Yikes. huge change. See, back in middle school, I was like like nerdy nerd like i liked learning so i can't imagine a world where like all of a sudden it's just like you can't get into high school like it's over you can't walk into high school anymore so i feel like if i lived in that world i'd at least for a year or two at least would be like it's fine i don't need high school just use the internet and learn (laughs) and try to like scrounge my way through like my own version of high school by just you know scouring wikipedia for hours every day or something and i don't know i Mm. I, i'd like to think i'd turn out only 10 iq points dumber than i am now or something yeah i I don't (laughs) know are you guys locking in your final answers here yeah cautiously yes okay and what and what were they just to bring it all to summation fuck the internet give me my education okay fuck the educate no not fuck the educate i i like internet internet's good so you guys disagree <laughs> sure yeah okay. i mean it's a wow. pretty shit both are pretty shitty situations yeah, overall. Yeah, terrible, yeah. i would have to decide with colin on this i don't think that i could i know i wouldn't be where i am without my education so i would i know and i also know that my life is great. Don't get me wrong. My life is great with the internet. It's fantastic. I just, I don't know if you guys noticed, but just in the middle of the show, I turned on my air conditioner with my phone, with my Nest app. Like, the internet's <laughs> awesome. Right? It's awesome. Um, by the way, Can't Nest is awesome. Can't do that with education. Yeah, they're not sponsoring us, but Nest is awesome. But anyways, uh, I, I, so I would give that up, right, just to, just to have the opportunities that an education has afforded me. So I would, you know. This is our moral of the day, kids. Stay in school. Tiny this right. podcast. Ding. Nah, f- and fuck it. Just yeah. keep the internet. The internet's fine. <laughs> I don't. I don't feel like I would be super dumb without my education, man. But like, I would. Just, God, I would be such a different person. I yeah. would not. Not even be close. No, I, I feel you too. I'd be yeah. completely different. Yeah. Same. So there you go. That's it. There you go. Man, fuck that though. Like having to choose between <laughs> education and internet, they're so intertwined to me at this point. <sighs> I just that, love Colin. Was like, how did? <laughs> What how do we say? how do I, mean, I get what? here? Yeah. How did I even <laughs> get here without internet? Like I, I thought he meant like how would I be on this podcast without internet right now? I mean, that's, that's, that, that too. I mean that's one of those things too. Yeah, like you couldn't do this. Like yeah, we'd have we to could. I'd have to write down what I want to say on the podcast and have you read it. 
<laughs> no, every week. We have to, we have to do a meticulous. We have to do yeah. a meticulous system where we each record like one line at a time and then like snail email, mail, e- yeah. snail mail, a thumb drive to each other. Well, you guys know that people used to play chess like from around the world. That's how they did it with snail mail. You guys know that, yeah. right? They yeah. would mail each other their moves and yeah, play like chess kn- that way. Knight to e6 or whatever. Yeah. And like one game of chess would take like a year. And like how many stamps? Like that's that dedication right there. It's pretty wow. lit though. Yeah. <laughs> So that does it for us this week on the Tiny Disc Podcast. You can follow us on all of our social medias. Uh, you can go to tinydisc.com to find our Facebook, our Twitter, our everything else that you would like if you want to keep up with us and our channel. Uh, you can also email any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, anything you want us to read on the show. You can email it to us at tinydiscpodcast at gmail.com. If you enjoyed uh, what we did for the past like hour, uh, you can leave us an iTunes review. It would really help us out. It really, you know, just we really appreciate it. Like, it's something that we can't do, but you totally can to just give us a little extra boost and let us know, like, hey, you're out there and we're entertaining you. Uh, and if you don't want to do an iTunes review, maybe just tell a friend. Let them know, hey, there's a pretty cool podcast out there about three dumbasses talking on the internet. That does it. So, where can we find you guys? Online on the internet. Uh... Colin and Mono on Twitter, aka Boo Boo underscore underscore five five. And don't worry, if you're decorating your tree while you're listening to this podcast, the tree looks completely straight. It's not crooked. You're fine. <laughs> uh, very, at J. Oh, go ahead. What? No, just very specific. <laughs> <laughs> but but timely, timely. Yeah. Uh, I'm on Twitter. I'm on the Twitters at J A C C E P E D A. Mr. Cepeda, if yo nasty. Gross. Gross. <laughs> Uh, you can find me at Panoptimist, P-I-N-O-P-T-I-M-I-S-T. And if you're sitting at your computer while listening to this, look out behind you. Uh-oh. Oh, creeper uh, status. You just got swatted, <laughs> just like all them Twitch streamers. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, so thank you so very much for listening to the Tiny Disc Podcast. And we'll see you next Thursday. Namkai Bando. <laughs> Some good shit. <laughs> Intelligible. <laughs> All my windows in windows are aligned just how I like them. Whoa, deep. I just watched Inception and that was deep. I've Did never really? seen that movie. It's all right. What the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> that movie's a fucking masterpiece. That movie's incredible. <laughs> I didn't it's say okay. I was proud of it. The fuck? It's okay. I think the thing I hate about Inception is the whole like that that air of like oh you didn't get it on the first watch like it's a really deep movie i understand it's supposed to be, it's supposed but, to be confusing i think the first I, time i i got so much more out of it the second time i watched it but to just sit there and say it's okay i will not accept this it's, I, a, it's a great movie i think what bothers me about it is the overuse of the boom boom I mean, yeah. well, okay listen we got to remember fucking Robert over here is a grandpa and he doesn't like soap yeah, that's true he's a geriatric but, so that is the real, worst movie that sound effect is annoying as fuck that's <laughs> the worst movie if you don't like bass yeah the <laughs> Inception is like one of the worst movies I could ever tell you to go watch I don't know I've seen it like twice in my life not back to back or anything it's like I so, it's from- not, so it's one long Transformers trailer yeah starring Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio <laughs> it's really good we have yeah. to find blah, the all spark. <laughs> I mean, I'll admit, yeah, it's worth a watch for sure. But like, I didn't think it was a masterpiece or anything. Okay, I think you should watch I it. I love. Colin. Hey, listen, I love Leo DiCaprio, so it doesn't take much to sell me on his movies. Yeah, I think true. it's one of Nolan's best films. I think my favorite thing about it is the fan theory that it's the like sequel to Titanic. Oh, that's fucked up. Yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> do you that's get it though, Jack? Up. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah, that's real fucked up. Yeah, it's pretty good. Wait, no, I thought that's that funny. was uh, the Great Gatsby. No, the, Gra- the Great Gatsby because he wakes up on a fucking seashore or some shit. That's Inception. 
Is it? Oh, never mind then. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't seen fucking Greg Gatsby either, so. <laughs> All right, can we start the show? Please? Yeah, yeah, we can. All right.